the University of Tokyo's program has been developing, and we could get another fund sources to develop our uh, sustainability science program, uh, Global Leadership Initiative. And uh, I'm willing to ask you to be a uh, senior advisor to this uh, program, and so that we could get uh, valuable comments from you. I would be privileged to accept that, and uh, let me congratulate you on this initiative, because I think the world and Japan need something like this. And most importantly, other countries apart from Japan need it as well. Thank you very much. Could you a little bit explain about the role of sustainability science to solve the global challenges, including climate change? I think it's uh, extremely important for us to understand that development has to be sustainable because otherwise we would run into a situation where the natural resources of this planet will be degraded or depleted to such an extent that economic growth and development, the way we know it, will not be able to continue at the same level. And that's precisely why I think every section of society must understand sustainability science. And this is not something that is based only on philosophy or uh, very broad principles. There has to be some degree of accuracy and precision in uh, how we define sustainability. So that's why the element of science is very important. And I think if a prestigious university like uh, the University of Tokyo uh, can develop a program of this nature, I think it will carry a very powerful message, quite apart from the value of a program of this kind. This uh, new initiative focuses on educating of the global leader uh, for sustainability science. Uh, could you a little bit explain about the necessity of the growth of leader in this field? I think uh, leaders have an extremely important responsibility because if they only worry about the next two or three years or the period for which they have been elected, then we might ignore uh, some of the longer term implications of the pattern of growth that we are pursu pursuing today. Uh, but if leaders have a vision that goes into the future, then clearly they can take some steps today which will make a major difference tomorrow. So from that point of view, I think it is important for leaders to understand the role of sustainability science and understand the elements that are included in sustainability. And if they do so, then they can also convince the public, they can educate the public on why certain steps are required to pursue such sustainable development. So I'm happy that uh, you're going to be focusing on leaders because uh, while we, of course, educate, it, educate people at the grassroots level, I think the initiative, the drive and the vision will have to come from leaders all, all over the world. Uh, this year's DSDS uh, Forum's uh, theme is focuses on the global commons. And also, we recognize the importance of our local commons, including uh, the community level initiatives. And so, the global leader need to combine the global perspective with the local perspective for the uh, development of a global commons. So, how do you think about the necessity of combining different levels? If we understand what uh, human society is doing to the global commons, then I think we all of us would be motivated to taking action at the local level, which will not only support the sustainability of resources at the local level, but will also add to global efforts uh, for tackling this problem at the global level. And the truth is that our global commons have been overused, they have been abused to such an extent that uh, we have to sensitize all sections of society on their responsibility. And that means uh, government, business, uh, civil society, research and academia. Um, and therefore, I think it is very important to understand that to protect the global commons, we have to take actions at the local level because it is in the interest of local communities to protect the commons as well. Uh, and this is what I hope this conference, this summit will be able to do. Our uh, new initiative is focuses on the areas such as uh, Asia and Pacific, or uh, the Africa. So the, how do you think about the significance of these two areas uh, uh, for solving our global challenges? 
Well, if you look at Asia, for instance, uh, the largest number of human beings live on this continent. Uh, growth of population as well as growth of the economy is uh, very high in this region. Uh, even though in countries like China and to a limited extent, India population growth rates have come down significantly. So I think the main uh, challenge that we are going to face uh, in terms of the size of the economy and its impact on the global commons will be in Asia. In the case of Africa, Africa is emerging from a state of uh, low levels of development. Uh, they have uh, very clear choices. If they become only a continent where mineral resources are exploited and GDP growth is measured only in terms of uh, primary industries or the minerals industry, then it's not going to help the welfare of the people of that continent. Uh, and yet it would impose a major impact on the environment. Uh, that's why I think these two uh, regions, the Asia-Pacific region as well as Africa, are really going to be the place where, on account of the fact that very rapid growth is going to take place, new infrastructure is going to be established, we have to focus on doing it the right way. And we have to focus on seeing that while developing, we don't damage the global, global commons. Which is not to say that other regions should not worry about it. Other regions also have to do this. But I'm happy that you're focusing on this region because there's clearly a need to generate knowledge both in the Asia-Pacific region and in Africa on this particular subject. Since the Great Eastern uh, earthquake uh, in Japan, we also recognize the importance of strengthening the resilience uh, for uh, preventing and uh, minimizing the damages from uh, the disasters like a tsunami. And so the combining of uh, this long-term and short-term risk management uh, and to establish a resilient society seems to be extremely important. Uh, I would like to ask your view on this issue. We have climate-related disasters, like uh, the IPCC has clearly projected an increase in heat waves, extreme precipitation events, and uh, extreme sea level impacts as a result of increase in the average sea level. Uh, but there are other kinds of natural disasters also. And all of this requires that we take an integra integrated approach uh, by which we can minimize the risk to human beings as well as their property. So I think you're absolutely right. Uh, in the context of climate change, we must consider how risk can be minimized by taking steps, uh, perhaps even involving capital investments and creation of infrastructure by which societies can adapt to these high levels of risk that we're going to face. If we don't do that, We'll have loss of lives, we'll have loss of property, which clearly we must avoid. We have to ensure that we anticipate these problems and take action today. And I think your uh, work at the University of Tokyo would be extremely valuable. Another uh, serious uh, issues that uh, Great Eastern Japan last week brought <coughs> is the nuclear power plant accident, uh, which gave a lot of impact, not only to the Japanese society, but also to the global community. This will bring us the fundamental changes in energy policy. Well, I believe every country will have to define and decide on its own energy policy. In some places, perhaps nuclear will form part of it. In others, maybe nuclear will not be included. Uh, I think there again it involves a question of the perception of risk that people attach with nuclear energy, even their preparedness to be able to handle this complex technology. And uh, there are clearly uh, some downsides to uh, nuclear energy and, and its use, which I think every society will have to decide for itself. I don't believe there is a single uniform solution for the whole world. And uh, in Japan, of course, we know that there's a very vigorous debate taking place right now 
But the Japanese people have a lot of wisdom. They have a vision of the future, and I'm sure they'll be able to take a decision uh, which is in their best interest. So I hope uh, that will be the case. Could you uh, explain about uh, the Japanese uh, uh, law in the development of uh, sustainability science? I think Japan's role is uh, paramount. It's very important. Japan is a society which is, which is rich in culture. It has a lot of very high values in the way Japanese people lead their lives. And uh, there's always been a very deep respect for nature. Uh, I'm always amazed that on a small island nation, you have so much greenery and you preserve it and you respect it and you have a deep reverence for it. So I think uh, uh, this program is not only a reflection of the scientific expertise that you have, but you also are bringing to bear your cultural, your traditional, your historic values because you have to look at sustainability, sustainability science in a much larger context than purely scientific and uh, narrow uh, areas. So I, I would uh, say that this is a wonderful initiative and I'm sure it will be very, very successful. Also, I would like to ask you about the role of uh, United Nations University in the development of the sustainability science. The United Nations University uh, has done remarkable work. It has uh, not only trained a number of people in areas related to sustainability science, but has been producing a lot of uh, very valuable knowledge and literature, which I'm sure will be used not only by the UN University, but by uh, a number of entities all over the world. So I think the role of the UN University has been highly creditable uh, in this particular area. UNU has been developing also the new initiative related with the biodiversity, uh, such as uh, Satoyama Initiative, or uh, contribution to the assessment process of the IP base, uh, which has been developed uh, rapidly in the recent years. As you, uh, the uh, chair of uh, the IPCC, uh, you could have some idea how we could combine the climate change discussion with the biodiversity discussion. Well, the impacts of climate change on biodiversity are going to be very serious. We had actually assessed in the fourth assessment report that if temperature, average temperature increase exceeds 1.5 to 2.5 degrees Celsius, then 20 to 30 percent of the species that we have assessed would be faced with the threat of extinction. So I think the link is very close and we need to, uh, we need to publicize some of these findings so, so that people and leaders and the scientific community understand the link between climate change and biodiversity. My last question is about the possibility of collaborating the UNU and the Teddy and Teddy University. So in the field of uh, the sustainability. We, we would be delighted to collaborate because uh, Terry as well as the Terry University are working entirely uh, within uh, the framework of sustainability science and sustainable development. So uh, we see a matching of interests. We see a fair amount of expertise and a lot of experience at Terry as well as the Terry University which I think gives us a deep interest in what you're going to do. So I would be delighted to explore opportunities to work together with you and university in this area.